Hey, thanks for jumping in. And today's episode, there I have quite a few of no shit moments, which is a lot of fun. And of course, we laugh a lot, like always. But before we get into all of that, I just want to uh, throw out that it is no shave November. I have not touched a razor or a trimmer uh, since the beginning of November. And there's a reason for that. It's very personal. You want to get all the detail? Check out the episode right before this. Uh, it's called Let It Grow, Fellas. I uh, would love for you to check it out. Any questions, hit me up. And Liv Rishi. Been talking about these guys, well, since the beginning of the show, because I love it. Been using it for years. And um, they make high-quality CBD product. It's not your bullshit uh, head shop or gas station CBD. It's all organic, high uh, third-party tested, all that good stuff. Uh, my personal favorite is the 1,000 milligram tincture. You put a little bit of that under your tongue. Whoo, man, good stuff. Check them out. LiveRishi.com. Use the code word table. Let them know I sent you and you're looking at 50% off. The holidays are here. It's a great gift idea or a great idea if you want to try it yourself. And also, they built a brand new website. It looks amazing. So check those guys out. LiveRishi.com. Use the code word table. Speaking of websites, I would love for you to check out mine, waltzkitchentable.com. I've completely consolidated everything to that website, including my blogs. Been having a lot of fun with those. Would love for you to just click around. Um, all the information you need to know, why I got started, some fun pictures, articles, all that good stuff. You want to say hello? Would love to hear from you. Uh, waltzkitchentable.com. Now, let's get on to this show. Welcome to Walt's Kitchen Table, where I feature captivating stories from fascinating people. I hit it off with Grace right away. This She is just a ball of fun, and her story, uh, she has a passion for cooking, and now she's doing this Ask Chef Grace, and you submit a question on YouTube, and she responds to that question via a short video it's a lot of fun i've put in some questions we had some good times and laughs uh also she is a flight attendant and we get into some crazy stories that is normal to her but not normal i'd assume not normal to most of us and she has this one story about duct tape and well shit i'm just gonna let her tell you all about it let's get to it Ticker says we're live. So now everything you say is going to be on the internet. All right, just where I want it. Perfect, right? <laughs> Man, I, I came across your YouTube channel. Now, how fun is that? I mean, we're, you just like cooking? Like, how'd you get going with that? I'm actually a classically trained French pastry chef. Oh, my wife would love to speak with you. <laughs> oh, my God. So you went to school for that? Yeah, I actually uh, I went to the restaurant school at Walnut Hill College. Where's um, that? It's in Philadelphia. Okay. I uh, graduated salutatorian. I got my bachelor's degree. Um, What's salut Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's salutatorian? It's the one on Val Victorian. It's like second place. Oh, you know? okay. Cool. And then... Um, the like the way my school worked was if you were in the um, culinary or pastry arts, you had to do culinary first to learn all your fundamentals, and then you got more in depth with everything. So, you know, like a lot of times people who do pastry, they just want to learn how to decorate a cake or something. They don't have to go through all that. So. Um, that was like a really good part of my education that's helping me out a lot now. <laughs> so, so you learned how to cook a steak before you could make a croissant? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then I put those two together and I figured out how to make a beef wellington, right? <laughs> uh, see, there you go. Hey, I'll eat both of those at the same time. No problem. No yeah. problem. Uh, how long is, was that? Is that like a four-year term yeah it was condensed it was, it was like three and a half or something it's they just take away your you know some of your summertime basically yeah but, you know get it done. Uh, now you had no interest in being like a 
full time, you know, chef or sous chef or whatever, like a to run a kitchen oh. and all that. Turns out, well, every uh, restaurant needs a chef, but they don't need a pastry chef. <laughs> <laughs> So did you end up being a chef somewhere? Or uh, not- yeah, I worked. Um, I really enjoyed fine dining because I liked the challenge of it. Like it was a lot of molecular gastronomy. It was a lot of, you know, like super fine details and stuff. Um, and then it was, but it was also like, you know, you get a bachelor's degree and then it's, still i think the highest i got paid on the line was like 13 dollars an hour oh so i was like you know people who got restaurants either had an angel investor or they worked for a giant restaurant tour like steven star or something who you know liked their creative vision and wanted to make money off of it so they like they opened a restaurant but it's really under that family you know so it's not yeah. their restaurant um so that's when I was kind of like, well, I, I was already, I had replaced this person in this job who had started a lifestyle blog and quit. And she said, like, they were making fun of her in the kitchen. They were reading out her blog. <laughs> and oh. and uh, I was her replacement. And they were like, you know, they were talking a bunch of shit. But I was just thinking man, that sounds like way more fun than being stuck here with these horrible people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So what do you, do, you remember, do you know what kind of lifestyle blog? Was it extreme? So were they really getting after her or was that? It was like a, I mean, it was like a food blog. It was before people were like really, I don't know if it's just people or it was just me, but people were like super on the internet. You know, this was definitely like pre-COVID. This was probably like 2000. 14 something like that okay so i was just like that uh that sounds a lot better than this job i don't want to be like these people and um i actually started applying to be a flight attendant then because i was like how do i live like anthony bourdain without a book deal or anything you know so that's what drove you to be a flight to go after a flight attendant career yeah yeah That's, that's super cool so, hey, I want to, I want to go, hold on. I want to go back to the, the the chefs in the in the kitchen. So, I I work a blue collar job during the day. <clears throat> I love it, and the shit talking is extra. It's huge. It's, I mean, that's that's how you get through the day, right? Oh, we. I mean, there's talking shit, and then there's talking shit. You yeah, know? Like, they were like, talking shit like. The regular talk shit where you're just having fun and you're being funny and oh they're out for blood right out for blood yeah they were you know they were being catty bitches <laughs> like <laughs> and i was like ooh, like best case scenario i turn into you like this is not what i'm trying to be <laughs> in my life. i i heard the guys and the ladies in the kitchen are just oh yeah it's, yeah they're- they're, they're uh, college level, PhD level talking shit, right? Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta uh, learn languages too. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, wow. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep. But so you're like, hey, I wanna travel the world with food and do all that. I'm gonna be a flight attendant. That seemed to be the best, in your mind, that seemed to be a good way to get around. Yeah, because um, making. I was making thirteen dollars an hour. I was like, "That's not gonna work for <laughs> going." And in the kitchen too, um, you know, like it's a very strange place because although like a lot of these kitchens are like corporate now, right? So you get your, I don't know, you get your sick days or whatever. You're not allowed to take them. Like in the culture, like nobody's there to replace you. So if you don't show up, you're fucking up you know, the person who's not there when you have your day off, day off. Like there's, it's not a, whereas if you're a flight attendant, like anyone can do your job. Like they call another person that's on literally on standby waiting for you to call. Oh, wow. Well, that's a, I mean, that's a relief for you then. Right. I mean, there's not that pressure to be there every day. And then, you know, 
that if you're not there the next day you go in the shit talking is just going to be through the roof right oh, through the roof man yeah. Yeah. yeah so i mean it's a different it's different culture for sure this is yeah online. i knew a, well i knew a couple of chefs and that ran kitchens and it's 15 16 hours a day just busting your ass and no money and yeah i mean at that too um after it's actually extremely hard to get a flight attendant job so i applied 40 times i think like paper wise before i got in to one airline Ooh. it's how they say it's harder to, than getting into an ivy league school no shit yeah <laughs> Wow, I would have I I never guessed that. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh my God. I'm I'm gonna be telling people about that. Cause because yeah. when you think when you think about a flight attendant, you're like I, I, I don't know what to compare it to, but you're like, Oh, it's you, you get a job. I mean you apply and you probably have some kind of training and that's what you do. That's cool. Well, I don't know if that's cool. Well, that's amazing how tough that is to get. No shit. Ah. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's kind of it's such a weird industry because you see some of these people and you're like, wow, you must just interview really well. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's true with any job. You're like, how does well, you, you must be a good salesman? You got through the interview. Yeah, but there, it's a, <laughs> you know, it's a. It's one of the few jobs where you get to see the world and the pays, the pays like it's not great right now. Um, but it, you know, it's it's a union job, so okay, it you know, goes through ebbs and flows. Of yeah, I, I didn't know. Uh, now all airlines union is that like a standard? Um, not all of them. Uh, I think Delta isn't. Uh, I think JetBlue just ratified a contract, maybe. Okay. Um. But like a lot of them, most of them are because, uh, you know, when you're replaceable, usually you need some representation. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Huh. And how long, and then were you doing that? You said you were doing it before the pandemic, right? Yeah, I was. Um, for how long? For, it'll be like five years. So. Wow. Same company? No, my company closed during the pandemic, but they're trying to reopen as a, um, North Atlantic Airways. So it's uh now I'm at another airline. I'm not gonna name because <laughs> we get the internet. Yeah, I'm we don't sure. get into all that. But uh but when you started five years ago, it was the same you didn't jump around to different airlines or you stayed with the same company? I stayed with the same one because um cool. I actually got lucky where I kind of just took the first airline that took me because I had been applying so much. I was like, yeah, I got one. <laughs> yeah. um, oh. And I wound up being like one of the only airlines that's only international. So I got to just see all of Europe and Scandinavia and I, also the West coast of the U S I got to go a lot. So now we're now, did you have to move to where they're based from? Um, no, I, I actually applied for, um, when I was applying, I was looking for airlines that had bases in uh, the New York, New Jersey area. And then I was JFK based. And then I wound up transferring to Fort Lauderdale. So now I'm in Florida. Oh, that's, no, that's horrible. You go from you go from the beautiful uh, airport of New York City out there on the, on the island to <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. It's horrible. Horrible. Uh, I miss I miss it actually up there, but uh, we'll see. You don't like you don't like Florida. I don't I don't like having to drive everywhere. I don't I don't like these Florida drivers. Everything's a highway here. It's oh like, wow! I didn't even think about that. Well, I mean, seems like in New Jersey. Well, if you're right in downtown or right in the boroughs of New York, you're not driving. You're you're scooting around. But like New Jersey and everything, everything's highways here too. I'm in New Jersey. Yeah. You would think that. Yeah, I heard you were in uh, Montclair, huh? Montclair. The other one. I uh, grew up in Nutley, so there you oh, go. Yeah? Ah, right down the street. Right down well, the street. Well, as you know, everything in Jersey, no matter where you go in Jersey, it's 30 minutes away. So 
with traffic. Yeah, that, that's not uh it's not like here everything is you know, it's thirty minutes away, but it's actually thirty minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> And then were you, through the pandemic, were you down, you were down in Florida? Yeah, it was like the first time, because like being a flight attendant, you're never home. So it was like the first time I was actually like in Florida. <laughs> and I was like, get me out of here. <laughs> After a week, you're like, ah, I got to slip my wrist. I got to get out of here. No, it was because I mean, the closest store is a mile. So I got to walk, you know, to the store because we only have one car because... Why would I have a car if I'm not home, you know? Yeah, yeah just sit in the driveway, rot away. Yeah. So. Man, man, so flight attendant is harder to get than an Ivy League school. That is nuts. So why why is it so hard? Like, what are the... I think it's because it's one of the few jobs that's, like, an actually, like, good job that you don't need a college degree for. You know, mm -hmm. like if you're looking for something like it, just, it has like, I mean, everyone is from like all different walks of life in it, but I think it, it seems glamorous. It's a job that people can like imagine themselves doing, I guess, you know, cause it's interesting to me that, you know, it's so hard to get in to be a flight attendant, but we have a shortage of pilots and we have a shortage of aircraft mechanics in this country. Oh, you don't like to hear that. Well, I mean, it's a good <laughs> opportunity if you're looking to do that, but yeah. it's like, you know, because you don't see those people. So you don't, I don't think people aspire to be that. You oh, know? I see what you, yeah, I see what you're saying. Maybe like coming out of the military or something like that, they might move into a position. If that's what they did in the military, they know about it. Right? Exactly. But a guy like me, like you said, I, I don't even think about that position just like many jobs you don't think about them because you don't see them or you don't hear about them or they're not advertised or as you said about being a flight attendant it's not like glorified like come and do this Woo, being all whimsical so i don't know but uh, you, obviously you like it right i i do like i see it as a good job if you're looking to do other things in your life if that makes sense now, but the thing is, though, when you land somewhere, do you actually have time to sit and go and enjoy it? Or, like, do you spin right around? Or is it a combination of both? So, at this airline, it's terrible. Like, you don't have time to do anything. Oh, but, wow. um, hopefully, it's also all seniority-based. So, hopefully, if I'm here a little bit longer and I have more control over my schedule, then I can be able to do something about that. Yeah. But my last airline, because it was all international and it was the, it was EASA, which is the um, European version of the FAA. Um, they had different rest regulations. So we actually had more time to rest. And because the flights were longer, they had to give us longer rest. So I always had at least like, you'd go over there, you'd sleep, you'd wake up, you'd go somewhere else. Like right. here, like I might have to go to like Denver and back in one night. You know what I mean? Um, now that's a commute. <laughs> yeah. And well, a lot of flight attendants also commute like that, which I think that's kind of crazy, but they do it, you know? Wow. Yeah. That's, I like traveling, but man, I like coming home too. It sounds like, yeah, I just, think the, the pandemic taught me that I like being home too. <laughs> that's another <laughs> problem. <laughs> well, you, you're, you are, you, I bet you, you are a very, uh, part of a very small group that would say that. Because most people are like, get me the fuck out of here. Jeez, I've been home too long. Da, da, da. And you're like, oh, God, that's pretty nice being home. That's all right. I'll, I'll hang out. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, I'm actually, I have to give it maybe like another month, but then I have to do the math because I think it might actually cost me more to go to work than to just stay home and cook everything. <laughs> now, do you, on your, so are you monetizing your YouTube channel and you're making money that way? No, it just might, like, based on if my boyfriend eats out and I have to eat meals out plus transportation back and forth to the airport and the, you know, things I have to buy for work, like stockings and stuff, sure, sure, sure. Like, it might cost more than what I'm getting paid, so, or the same, 
So we're wow. gonna figure that one out. <laughs> it's one. Of, it's one of those things they don't talk about when they try to glamorize that position, huh? Yeah, it doesn't. But especially for like, I didn't make enough money to pay the rent by myself this month. Like, it's not a good. I mean, not not great. We gotta get that union contract. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so good thing you're good thing you're uh uh trained in how to cook so you can make up some stuff instead of just throwing some ramen in a pot right yeah i mean i've made it i think uh the smells coming out of the microwave in the crew room making people jealous <laughs> <laughs> i was like a uh, homemade lasagna with like fresh pasta <laughs> stuff like that. and not and not from a tv tray right Nope. <laughs> they're like, hmm, that smells good. What is that? You know? Now, was there some kind of train, like extensive training involved? Because. Yeah, it, and it was unpaid. Well, yeah. unpaid training. And so we had to do a. How, for how long? For a month. Holy shit. Full time yeah. for a month. They make you live in a hotel and you have to. They give you like a meal stipend, but it's not enough to cover all the food. And then, uh, yeah, so yeah. it depends on the airline. But, um, you know, so many people want this job that Man, you, don't, you don't want to make the sacrifice, they'll get another one, you know? That's the problem. Damn, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to wonder why so many people want the damn job. You see the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The benefits are good. When, once, you, once they kick in, they're good. But we'll see. Well, you got to wait like three months or something for them to kick in. Uh, six months, yeah. Six months. Yeah. My uh, my full my day job, my full time job. The benefits are just phenomenal, phenomenal, and that's part of the reason I took the job. And the freedom, I have a lot of freedom during the day. You know, I'm not tethered to anything. I got a work truck, and they say, "Here's the keys. Go take care of business." So it's kind of nice, uh, and pays good. Love the job, love the physical part of the job and all that. You know, of course, there's days you're like, you want to burn it all down and you swear at it and you're wondering what the hell you're doing it for. But those are, that's part of it, I guess. Uh, but the, so hard to get it. I just, this is fascinating to me that it's so hard to get into. And then you're a month. Now you probably travel to some hub to train, right? They probably go. You probably go to like, you you're coming here to train, and they have a place. Yeah, but um, you know, they had a few of my friends had already went to training, and I actually had it better because they weren't even allowed to leave the uh, the hotel because of the COVID restrictions. Oh. Um. So we were allowed to leave the hotel, but it's like not. Like they put, you know, it was, in, it was in a hotel basically. And then they have another training facility where like you go on the mock-up of the plane and, you know, a lot of people think like flight attendants are just like sky waitresses, but we are actually trained <laughs> extensively in uh, yeah. CPR. Um, we have to learn how to like fight a fire in the airplane in case some dummy puts a cigarette in the bathroom. <laughs> we have to do how to, uh, a lot of things with fire, because fires aren't good on airplanes. And uh, like decompression of like, if it loses oxygen, we need to learn all this other stuff. So um, yeah, it, it takes a month. And then like the, how to deal with irate passengers and all that stuff, right? Well, they just actually started, uh, I guess they were calling it like de-escalation training, but um, sure. yeah, they, well, I mean, if you don't know how to do that by now, <laughs> you know how to, it's not happening. Now, is it mostly old, uh, when I say older, like late 20s, early 30s people doing this, or is it a lot younger? Uh, well, you have to be 21 because we serve sure. alcohol. So, sure. um, I would, it. I mean, we have people everywhere from 21 to like 65, you know, because oh, once, oh. once once you get in. in this job, what? Once you're in, right? You're, yeah, once you're, you're in, you're you're pretty good as long as you pass the recurrent training every year. <laughs> you're good. Oh man, you got you got to, every year you got to go for a month of unpaid time. 
It's not a month. It's only, um, I don't know what it is here because I haven't done it. It's probably like two or three days. Yeah, just to kind of freshen up, right? Yeah. New rules and new regulations probably every year come out. Well, they want to make sure that you still know how to do, you know, open the doors and, you know, when when to open them, when not to open them. <laughs> you know? So when you're at cruising altitude, this is when you don't open the door. Mm-hmm. And yep. it doesn't surprise me that you have to physically tell somebody that and explain to them what would happen if you do open the door. But you would think if this job is so hard to get into, we would be able to weed those ones out. <laughs> no, somebody knew somebody and owed somebody a favor and their kid wanted to be a flight attendant. Oh, that's always how it works, especially, <laughs> yeah. especially in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, 100% right. From the garbage business to a flight attendant, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I got a couple crazy questions for you, and I know that we're going to be able to swap some crazy stories. I got a couple for you. Because okay. you probably get asked all the time, right? What's the craziest thing? Like, what's the, what's the most, the, the question you get asked the most? When, you, when you're at a party and you're like, I'm a flight attendant, what's the first thing somebody asks you most of the time? What's your favorite place to go? What's what? What's your favorite place to go? Like, where's your favorite place to visit? That would, that would not have been my question. Oh, it's the, what, what's the craziest thing that happened to you on the plane? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's too many. There's too many stories. <laughs> I know. Well, I got. <clears throat> Ten hour so flight. I, of things <laughs> yeah. yeah i got so i got one I, I i gotta tell you this one it happened a couple of weeks ago i uh i work for u-haul the moving company and one of my customers like i have they call them dealers so they rent like a gas station or a hardware store you know had, they see you see they have trucks so it's not like a u-haul center it's like a we call them a dealer And he had this little truck going to Chicago and the lady flew in from into Newark Ubers over to the dealer and the dealer goes crazy. She looked like she dressed to the nines, her suitcase rolling on four wheels must've cost a thousand dollars. And she's like, can we put this suitcase in the back of the truck? And he's like, Oh, absolutely. I'll help you out. And he goes, Walt, as soon as I'm walking up to the truck, I went, damn it. The back door is open just a little bit. And in Newark, that's not a good sign. There was two homeless ladies having sex in the back. <laughs> and my dealer goes, Walt, if somebody told me this story, I wouldn't believe them. I go, holy shit, dude. What what the customer say? Well, I mean, what happened? He, she goes, she rolled the suitcase up to the back of the truck, said, clean this up. I got to get going. <laughs> and I was like, total gangster. She's from Chicago coming into Newark. And she saw that. She's like, whatever. I was like, I'd like to see what the worst thing she's ever seen. <laughs> and he goes, Walt, they were, one was buck naked. One didn't have a shirt on. <clears throat> I was like, oh my God, dude. So that just happened very recently for me. But that's. You know, I see some crazy things, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Any any ones that pop in your head that just real short, you know, you don't have to. Oh, none of them are short. <laughs> well, well, let me let me ask you this. What did you think about the, the video with the guy duct taping the dude to the seat? Was it a guy duct taping? Um, that's so. pretty yeah. normal. I like people get upset about that, but uh, <laughs> they're... Uh, they most airlines they either have duct tape or they have like zip ties. Is that part of your training? Yeah. Uh, okay. But I, I don't. Know. I actually had a. I kind of am advocating for different training because uh, they they. <laughs> I'm getting. I might get myself in trouble. But I don't care. Um. So. I was telling that story. I'm like, shit, somebody's going to listen to that. Like, you can't be telling those stories. But anyway. Uh, but anyway, so um, it's just outdated. Like, the they were trying to teach, like, self-defense class. And so let me back up. 
So also when I was a kid, um, my brother and I were highly competitive in jujitsu and we were the top grapplers in the country. My brother just opened a, a jujitsu school in Nevada, actually. But um, awesome. I think that's one of the best. I get my son into that. I think that's one of the best martial arts you can do. The most, uh, the most useful to know how to do. Yeah, and um, ineffective. So when I was in this self defense class, and they were showing people a hammer fist, and listen, I, I'm a little, you know, I'm five four. Most of the people that are going to attack me on a plane are yeah. uh, 200 plus, you know? <laughs> I'm not hammer fisting them. No, no. So although they like, you know, they basically tell you, oh, well, I hope you have like a strong passenger to help you out because, you know, when it comes with, to the, like the duct tape and the zip ties, like they, another problem is they don't show you how to get there. You know, if like they don't show you how to get there without hurting someone. Sure, sure. So I was talking to the people kind of about, you know, we learned more practical things. Like, because also the other thing is if someone's attacking you on a plane, you don't have anywhere to run, you know? And one of the, the first lesson in self defense is get away. But where are you going to go? You can't go anywhere in a plane. So you have to try to control the situation as best as you can before someone can help you, basically. Mm -hmm. That's your option. So, yep. you know, I was trying to talk to them a little bit about that, but the, you know, the biggest tool in stalling is gonna be de-escalation <laughs> um, before we even get to, you know, a physical confrontation. And I think, you know, when you see people duct taped to chairs, it's because um, someone fails along the line in the de-escalation. And there's a lot of flight attendants that are a bunch of sassy bitches, to be frank, and uh, they need to calm down. And, you know, they're yelling at the uniform. They're not yelling at you. And a lot of people take that personally. And then people get duct taped to chairs. <laughs> wow. That, that is, <clears throat> when I brought that up, that was not the response I thought you were going <laughs> to give me. You're like, ah, it's common. <laughs> okay. <right. clears throat> well, I guess, uh, but the thing is, though, that if that's what if it gets to that point, yeah, and you, usually you, you to. don't want to leave. With, usually, you know that person's a problem before you leave the ground. So, okay. the best thing that they're trying to impl implement now is getting those people off the airplane before we even take, take off. Yeah. Now, did they change the regulations to where the captain can't come out of the cabin now because of the whole nine eleven thing? Um, so on the ground, they're usually, you know, they're in and out or whatever, but right. as soon as we, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to leave, they, they can come out, but they, there's like a whole procedure with that that I can't really talk about. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get that. I just know yeah. that, um, uh, I was watching a documentary or something and they were talking about how they changed some of the flight rules for the crew obviously after 9 11 on how that happened so yeah i don't honestly to me because of i was flying a european airline they don't have that rule which i think is better um they what they do is they actually have cameras in the forward galley outside the cockpit okay. so the, um the pilots can just see who's in the forward galley you know if there's a problem or not and they do have a rule where there has to be two people in the cockpit at all times. And that happened after, some, I think some like German pilot flew, like he went crazy and he waited for the other pilot to go to the bathroom and then he flew the airplane into the mountains or something. Oh, wow. Um, Cause he like broke up with his girlfriend or some nonsense. <laughs> and um, so since then there's been the rule that it's two people at all times. Um, okay. Cause what but, I was, because I was thinking, what, back in the day, the captain could come out and handle some unruly dude, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes they do when you're on the ground, you know, because they're not, when the door's open and it depends. Because it's the it's also the captain's final say if that person gets thrown off or not. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you ever had it to where the authorities meet you guys on the tarmac and arrest somebody yeah. when... All the time. <laughs> okay. 
Um, they, uh, it just sucks because it's usually a bunch of show and, you know, nobody, yeah. nothing happens to them. Well, I see what the, you police, mean. the police don't want to do the paperwork, you know. Talk, make it so everybody on the plane with their cell phones is making it look all good and then they toss them out the other end. And nothing yeah, and depending on what country you go to, like sometimes we would get off the plane and they would, you know, they would get their bags before us and we'd see them <laughs> in the airport. <laughs> and they'd be like, fuck you. And we'd be like, oh. Oh. <laughs> but one yeah. time we had this terrible guy though, and um the police took him off and he was so his wife was like so frantic. They were like they were like beating their kids on the plane. And uh we told them number one, we're like don't do that. <laughs> Number two, uh, like it was really bumpy. And we're like, one little slip, you're breaking some part of this child. Like, we yeah, can't sure. do right now. <laughs> so the guy was all mad and he slapped one of the other flight attendants in the face. This was too, so, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost it. What'd you say? This is on Christmas Day, I remember. We were flying. And uh, so. Basically, we got out into the airport, and they had just let him go. They didn't do anything with him, but he left his bag on the plane. So he came running back, and he was like, now he wants our help, right? So then, you know, it's a law that, like, once you leave the airplane, you can't go back onto the airplane. So <laughs> so we went, we, oh, we'll, we'll go check for it. Don't worry. It was right there. And we're like, oh, we can't find it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, that that happened to that happened to my wife, and we nothing. We weren't rude or nothing on the plane or anything like that. But she left a leather jacket on the plane, a really nice one. And I go, yeah, I know it's there. They're like somebody picked that up and was like, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> now, usually, honestly, that's the only time my we've not, we haven't returned anything. That is what, the only time. They're an asshole. Um, well, that in particular, because you hit somebody too. And the thing was like. It was a foreign country, so like, it was very hard to like press charges with like everyone from different nationalities and stuff. Oh, for like the flight attendant to press charges against him. Oh yeah, that would have been. Yeah. Hilarious. Man, and he probably knows that too. Yeah. Can you can you imagine what his home life is? Well, their home life is like if he's acting like that on a plane. It's, it was probably terrible. Like he was. That's crazy. And yeah. he wouldn't like, you know, was, he wouldn't speak to any of the, the like the women on the plane, you know. So when he was, they were telling him to sit down, like that's he was getting, he wasn't getting offended because he was being told to sit down. He was getting offended because a woman was telling him to sit down. Oh, I could totally see that. I could totally see that. What an asshole! Well, it was, make. Come on, man. Yeah. Jeez. Uh so the the thing. There's one thing that drives me nuts about flying, <clears throat> and I finally figured it out. Somebody pointed a little piece out of it, and I figured it out. And I'll get your opinion. So, you get a you get a plane ticket, and they say, "Okay, this group lines up. This group lines up. Whatever." Why do people like jam up against the gate? I'm like, you got a seat, bud. Right? I mean, the plane. I don't know, man. Unless you have like a ridiculous amount of bags. That's what somebody said. Because if. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, then I started looking. And the people that are <clears throat> trying to like jump groups and do all that, they have crazy amount of bags and they take up all the room in the, in the luggage so they don't have to check bags and pay for it. Well, now you have to pay for the carry ons too. Like you get like a personal item for free from most airlines. But it's been a while since I've flown, so you don't uh yeah, never check a bag. That's my advice. <laughs> oh really? Never check a bag. I I never I you know, I have a carry on size suitcase. I could I could live out of it for a month and then just do my laundry and be fine. <laughs> wow, because the way it's treated? Is that what you're I mean, my last airline, I, I checked my bag maybe like four or five times, and they lost it four or five times. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just, uh, if you need your stuff, don't check it. Yeah, somebody gave me advice 
quite a while ago, <clears throat> year, years ago, that said that you're, you should, on your bag that you bring your carry on, you should bring like an extra pair of clothes and like deodorant and underwear. <laughs> Don't forget the underwear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Underwear and all that. So when the guy goes, they lose your luggage, not if, when they lose your luggage, at least you have some clean clothes and you can like freshen up in the bathroom, you know, that kind of thing, brush your teeth and that. So ever since then, that's what I do on my carry on. I make sure I have a, you know, that kind of uh, stuff with me. And of course, entertainment, you know, audio books. And- a lot of, the thing that surprised me when I started going international all the time was that a lot of these European women will come to like New York to go wedding dress shopping. And they will bring their, they'll bring their, wet. they'll like wear their wedding dress or they'll bring it, you know, in the giant thing on the plane because they're so afraid of checking it, which was uh, interesting. See, I thought it was the other way around. I thought people from like New York went to Paris to get a wedding dress and then bring it back. No, it's, it's more expensive in Paris. <laughs> Well, that's a good point. It's cheaper to buy a seat for your wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell me somebody does that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Super my regular. God. <laughs> you buy a seat for your wedding dress. That's incredible. I guess if you spend that much money on a wedding dress, right? You, like you said, you don't want to stuff it in a bag and then put it in checked and then it gets lost, right? Yeah, or wrinkled, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Man, see these things, dude. I was like, I don't know. I guess I don't think of those things because one, I don't think I'll ever be in a wedding dress. <laughs> and then two, it's just fun. You know, some of this stuff fascinates me. When when you get masses traveling or masses moving together as a mass, you know, like just constant amount of people moving and stuff. It's incredible to watch the human action and the way humans behave and you know you get some people i think my wife and i fall into this group we're just so laid back we're like yeah it's cool all right this is what we're doing and then you got people that the smallest thing right yeah <laughs> you do, you don't put enough uh you don't put enough ice cubes in their drink and they're just through the roof yeah, they freak out. Where did I hear that? Who told me that story about a a waitress? Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A flight attendant was trying to do CPR on a gentleman in first class, and a and a lady in first class was like bothering the flight attendant. And finally, the flight attendant was like. What's what's going on? I'm trying to help this man. She's like, can I get some more ice for my Merlot? Number one, as a chef, you don't put ice in Merlot. Ah, damn it. <laughs> as soon as I said put ice in some, I'm like, first thing that came to my mind was Merlot. So thanks for the correction. Uh, we don't put. I, I'm sure it was white wine, but you you don't but, put ice in there anyway. <laughs> but it it just it was a story of classic. You probably see similar stuff. I mean, maybe not that extreme, but people are just all about themselves, I imagine. And I mean, what- less less than you would think, because it's always the, you know, the bad apples that stick out, you know. But for the yeah. most part, I mean, the, the old plane that I was flying was 344 passengers. So to only have one person freak out out of that many people is <laughs> pretty like- good. Yeah, yeah. So, like, in, in my job, I bet you, you you'll agree with me in your position, same as mine. I see the absolute best of humanity. I see people go out of their way to help other people and all that good stuff. But I also see the absolute worst in humanity. Like, I see from top of the mountain to the bottom of the valley. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine with and and two, it's probability of numbers, right? The amount of people that you see every day going back and forth and they're stressed out or or crazy, you know, they're all worried about catching a flight or 
stressed out from traveling to begin with. So one little thing kind of set him off, but yeah, the, the duct tape thing still though, I can't get over that. Dad, the Ivy league school oh, is duct tape. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's duct tape is easy to cut through. So if you have to get off the plane quick, you know, you can't just leave that person there. So they can, sure. they can cut right through it and you can get out. Oh, so like you, like the you as a flight attendant, you could release him quickly. That's why you use duct tape. Yeah, they they always have some kind of, you know, safety right. cutters type thing on there. Sure. sure. Ah, so what's the plans for your uh, YouTube channel? You just you gonna keep working that or what? Here, let's get over here to your YouTube. <laughs> so I am I am still working on it. I need money, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm figuring it out. I'm probably going to take a break on the interviews for a little bit. Um, I'm actually starting this new segment called Ask Chef Grace. So if you got a question for me, uh, let me know. And I'm going to do like one minute segments where I can oh, answer the question and have enough content where it's, I got to get used to this new job basically. And also, you know, if you want, if you want to help me achieve my dream of becoming a full-time YouTuber, <laughs> <laughs> you can go. So, we, so we, I like that idea because I do, well, it has nothing to do with chef and all that, but to help me with time and to, with content. So I have full length episodes what we're working on, but between each one, I do like 10 minute episodes and it's just me. So what are you thinking of doing for content wise? Like people would submit questions and you do like a little short clip video to explain yeah. that. Because there's a lot of food questions that aren't actually like how to questions, you know, like, uh, I talk a lot on my channel about kind of like the problems with the industrialized food system and like, you know, things that people even, or even things that don't have to do with that. Like, why would you buy cold pressed olive oil instead of hot pressed olive oil? You know, like things like, yeah, sure. That you don't you don't need a you know a recipe video to answer that question. So um, I think that would help out a lot because if you know like the how and the why you're doing something, it becomes easier to translate it into like cooking it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be now. Would you be just video? Well, you'd probably just you do video and then turn it into a make it your podcast as well too so they'd be short little thing like if i said hey what's the difference why would you use this ingredient instead of this ingredient you would make a five minute video of hey this is what it's about and next yep oh that's great i think that's a great idea and, and then and, well and that it cuts you cuts down on your time and creating it and all the back work and the editing and uploading and downloading and everything that you do right yeah, because uh, especially with the recipe videos, like the video might be six minutes, but it took me you know, <laughs> 20 hours <laughs> yeah. to, to make the actual video. So um, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm trying to do some shorts if I do get a chance to go out on layovers to like highlight some local businesses and stuff. Um, I got to go out in Nashville um for like a couple hours and uh there's this place ed lee's barbecue that i heard about and it was so good so i did like a little short about like my night in nashville um and then i want to try to do i might take the longer interviews and because i mean i do like the conversation style like just like you're doing so maybe cut it into clips where i think oh this is a good little segment um for people that don't want to sit there for two hours <laughs> yeah yeah no i i totally understand that uh but that moves you into the going back to the beginning that moves you into the bourdain kind of <clears throat> uh direction if you're flying around and you got a couple hours you could plan that out right so if you fly somewhere you drop in you do some research you would think that but when you're a new flight attendant you're on this thing called a reserve <laughs> 
Ah. And you don't know where you're going until they tell you you're going there. And you don't know how for long you're going to be there. Oh, you. I can't. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. But even, so, okay, so what happens if you could do some, you know, at the last minute you land, you, you Google something, and you do just short clips on your phone? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, um, that's cool. But, you know, sometimes, like a lot of times you'll get to a place at, um, for instance, like I just did like this red eye and I got into Baltimore at like five mm. o'clock in the morning. And then we, you leave the same day at like 6 PM. So you have time to sleep and wake up and go to, you know, it's mostly like that. Um, but in the off chance that I do get time to like go see the place, that's exactly what I'm doing. No, that's really cool. Cause when we travel, my wife just loves Yelp and everything, and we find we find some gems, you know, off the road, down this alley, and, you know, to look at it, you're like, oh, we're going to eat there, and then the food's amazing, <laughs> but, you know, so we have a lot of fun with that, but, you, you know, the hidden gem thing, too, right? I mean, that would be... Montclair has a couple hidden gems. Uh, yeah, Montclair is nice for food. Is yeah. uh, Brick Lane Curry House still there? I don't... Hang on a second. Is Brick Lane Curry House still around? What'd you say? Oh, my, oh, is that that one we walked? Oh, that's right. Oh my! I said I bring it to I bring it up to my wife. She's like, oh, and then, then she goes, they're not as good as they used to be, but it's still there. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My my wife is a foodie, so she yeah she'll she she points that stuff out. I've learned quite a bit from uh, her cooking. She's a great cook, too, as well. So uh, she'll get a kick out of our conversation about food. But the traveling thing, now let me ask you this. when, As you go up in rank on, as a flight attendant, you'll have, like you said before, you're going to have more control over your... My schedule, yeah. So right? Well, then you can start moving into that direction. Is that what... Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know how long that's going to take. So there's a basically I'm still working for this airline. But if my old airline comes back, I'm going to have so much seniority that I probably won't have to be on reserve. Okay, cool. So that that might be an option in the future. But uh, it's going to be about six months before I can figure out my life more. <laughs> And and when you're uh, eating ramen, that's a that's a long six months, right? Yeah, yeah, it feels super long. Yeah, it what feels longer you... than the pandemic. <laughs> now, uh, so are you on some weird? I know we flop emails back and forth. You're on some crazy schedule now, because I yeah. think I think today you said this was your only guaranteed day off. Yeah, they have. Um... They have guaranteed days off, and then they have, like, movable days off. They haven't moved any of my movable days off yet. But um, basically, you get eight guaranteed days off, and then you get four movable ones. And the movable ones, I think they have to give you, like, 24 hours notice. And I think that's different at every airline. Um, but, you know, it's not guaranteed. So it's just not a, not a safe bet. <laughs> Yeah, but being so new. You now, are you guaranteed so many hours, or you just got to go when they call, and so you could yeah, work? You have a base pay of seventy-two hours, um, which isn't great. Because like I factored it out, and I'm like, I'm basically working for like ten dollars an hour. Like, this isn't good. Yeah. And then everyone else I'm working with is like, well, if you pick up on your days off, and I'm like, yeah, you know, this is a union job. I shouldn't have to pick up on my days off. Like, right. well, like, not to get too political, but this is America, man. Like, what are uh, we doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Oh God, we could, we go another couple hours in that direction. That's why I'm like, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's it. so you get like a base pay of seventy two hours. I assume that's two weeks. Um, so for two so weeks. play attendant pay doesn't really work like that. Um, <laughs> so you're, you get paid for flight hours 
So from the moment that the plane pushes back until the blocks are in, right? Blocks in, blocks out. Those are okay. You know, the plane doesn't go anywhere. They go around the tires. They still have brakes, but like just in case. Yep. Um, <laughs> and then you get that. So that's what you're getting your hourly rate for. So then that's all the times you're at the hotel and stuff. And like you're out of base, you get like a $2 per diem around the clock. So. Oh, that kills your average. Yeah, exactly. So, that, uh, right I so like last month I had 80 hours, right? Or so, but then also like you don't get paid until the, um, like all the, all the, the hours I worked last month, I'll get paid this month for. Cool. Got to float a little bit. But it, yeah, so you gotta, you gotta manage your bills, right? But so like the first month I worked, I only worked, got base pay because they didn't fly me because they have, I don't know, they had to do something with the training and stuff. So I won't get per DM, which is not good because that's like a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Wow. Damn. And, you know, as we talk, you're like, you know, it keeps going through my head. It's like, why the hell is it so hard to do that if, you know? If people really knew what flight attendants do, but if it's a good job and you enjoy it and you get to travel and do you get to fly for free? Yeah. I mean, when we talk about benefits, like I'm not referred to health insurance, <laughs> the health insurance is, oh. uh, ah. yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. You got something, right. Yeah. You got some that's important. Um, but the benefits are, like you can travel standby anywhere and you can do it on, depending on who your union is, like has agreements with and stuff, you can yeah. travel on other airlines um, oh. for basically just the price of the taxes. So that's, Oh, wow. Know. Okay. So your, um, air, your airline would be a hundred percent for free, but like another airline that has a union agreement, you just got to pay the, the tax it's called a jump seat agreement so you can um you know you can you fly standby usually you're not in the actual jump seat but sometimes you are if there's no room yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah you can fly around and then also like after like six months then uh, my travel companion which is my boyfriend he can go with me um i think my mom can go with me and uh, you get buddy passes too, which are like, you get like a limited amount of buddy passes every year. So you can give your friends uh, some and buy tickets. Oh, that's cool. And then your airline is international, right? The one you're with now? So you could go, um, yeah, kind you, of. Yeah, you could go international? <clears throat> yeah, but whenever you go international, you have to pay the, uh, the taxes too. Oh, okay. That's that, but that pay the shipping. <laughs> Um, I, so on your YouTube channel, we got like 1.7, no, what I, what I see 1.7, 17, yeah, it's going, it's going down, it's going up and then it's going down. Oh uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's the way life goes. Right. Yeah. I think I well, lost like 20 subscribers as well. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, no. Do they, do they comment on why they leave? Could like lack of content or they didn't like the content or. No, I'm hoping they're just cleaning up the uh, the Russian porn bots that keep commenting on my videos. <laughs> hey, man. It, hey, it's con it's content, right? It's actually yeah. I'm like, well, they're commenting. <laughs> like in like on Instagram. Oh, share this and DM me with this, and I'm like, oh God, just stop, just stop. But oh, I guess there's a way to stop it. But that's like me unsubscribing to things on my email it's just easier to delete it and on instagram it's just easier to ignore it and i just keep moving forward but i don't have that big of a problem but for uh, a while, there was a the, like the same picture of this girl with like you know the boobs but like no nipples or whatever and so the <laughs> same bot was commenting on this other guy's uh uh youtube channel um i'm gonna forget his name but he <laughs> is a good barbecue channel. Uh, Skull and Mortar, that's the name of the channel. Um, John Barker. So I remember I was like, what are you doing over here, bitch? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you cheating on me? Cheating on me. 
That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. That stuff's crazy. I mean, that's a whole. Holy cow, man! People have crazy conspiracy theories on that stuff. But I mean, uh, yeah, I just saw your YouTube. I like. I love your videos of the editing. Uh, do you do that? What so do you obviously you do that in a software, or you just film it and speed it up and then cut it out? Um, it depends. I do Premiere Pro, so mm -hmm. it took me a while to figure out how to uh, speed things up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. Yeah, slow things down. I don't know how to slow things down. <laughs> move, move slower. Uh, uh, no, I mean, just the we did some cooking videos in the in the video company. And they're just, they're kind of a pain in the ass between, depending on what you want to, depending on what you want to show. Do you want to show the prep? Do you want to show the finished product? Do you want to show the actual, you know, making of it? Depending on what you're making, because we, we did a bunch of variety ones. And the amount of work, I got to give it to you. I mean, your videos look great. I tell you that. Uh, but I'm like, fuck, dude, the amount of editing. Ugh. it's so much editing and it's like the um that's like your per diem time <laughs> yeah and it's also like the, that's what i was like oh i at least i'd be able to like bring my stuff with me to edit and there's not enough time to do that oh no no i wouldn't think no, that like, either no. you you wouldn't sleep and then you're tired working and that doesn't get you anywhere right no then you blow a slide and then you get fired <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, they, yeah, there was, what's his channel? I interviewed this other guy, uh, Philip Lemoyne, and he is a, like, he, you know, he's a foodie, and he decided, but he's, like, trained in videography and everything. So he started a YouTube channel specifically about how to shoot cooking videos, and that helped me so much. Oh, that's cool. So, and now he's blown up. Now he's got like, I don't know, like hundreds of thousands of subscribers and stuff. But uh, and that's, does he actually do a cooking show or he just does tips on how to build a cooking he does, show? He does both, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, which is cool. But yeah, he, there's a gentleman in a group that I follow that it's similar to that in a way, but they help podcasts. So this guy puts out a crazy amount of free uh, content, and it's helped me. Like what you see here, what we're looking at, I got these ideas from his, just his free content, and even the back work stuff and um, and uh, post work and equipment and all that. I've benefited from his free advice greatly. So I can see why a guy would blow up given that out yeah and he's now he's probably got sponsor deals and stuff with equipment and yeah you know. that's what i need man yeah I was gonna ask you, <laughs> do you reach out to people or do you like actively look look for that stuff no i probably should i don't know how to do that i feel weird like i feel like i'm begging for money which i am well that was <laughs> just, which you are. um the 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 guy i'll send you a link to uh it's it's pod decks on on instagram and he has a whole and he does a podcast obviously but he has a whole episode on how to hit people up for sponsorships how to beg for money one-on-one yep, like. that's exactly <laughs> but, some change yeah it'd be like those guys that i see on my route all day in the intersection with a cup hanging a cup give me some, give me some money give me some money. Some <laughs> dude i i i just can't youtube is a monster to deal with i i do this because of the pandemic i was doing just person to person stuff and then that whole pandemic thing happened and that, then i went to this format and this is why this format's the only reason i have a youtube channel i yeah i guess i i kind of fell into it because of the pandemic too but uh i feel like i was always kind of living like the way I live and I guess my uh, you know my boyfriend was like you should just record it it's interesting <laughs> no, the, the, again the way you do it is awesome you know watching them uh, I 
I enjoy them. You know, I don't watch cooking shows because the only thing I know how to do with food is eat it. I can make, I can make oh, some. Paul's kitchen table doesn't know how to cook. Well, uh, no. Uh, I can make some. I can burn you some uh, scrambled eggs if you want. Okay. But you know, <laughs> I, if, if you get lucky, I can chop up some hot dogs and throw it in there. No, no, not no, no. Some no. ketchup on top. <laughs> uh, but with the video background, I do look at content and the way things are edited and the sound and and that stuff and and knowing that you do it yourself, I, I just think it's a great job. I enjoy them. So it, it is. I'm working on the, my next step is on getting a, uh, a like I got one of those lab mics. Yep. That goes into the SD card, but I yep. want to get another one. So this way, when I go to a different, like a different place, I can interview a chef or a farmer or something, and then have to, and then maybe I don't know how I'm going to do the camera part, but <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, I mean, that's what's the bad part about that. If you're running solo, like between flights, you just got to do the classic on your cell phone. You're both in it and it's a selfie and or set up a tripod with a cell phone and do it that way uh then with two lav mics you gotta get like a little task cam to run it you know i have one task cam that i bought right before everyone else tried to buy them <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably a couple channels you got a couple channels on it I don't know uh so Two, it's probably got at least two channels on it. So now you have two lav mics. So your lav mic has the part that hangs onto your belt, right? Yeah. And then it has a part that plugs into your task cam. Yeah, and those two things, things right? what yeah, and those two things talk to one another. That's a that's a wireless lab system. No, it's not wireless. Oh, okay. Okay. It goes straight into the SD card. Cause I had gotten one that was wireless. And it didn't work. And I was like, this is okay. too fast for me. Well, well I think, uh, I think the, the more simple you make it, the better. I, th I believe that, and I saw a ton of this where people try to overcomplicate things. And it's like, dude, why are you trying to overcomplicate this? This is not that. Why do you got to do that? And I, I find that with podcasts and people are like, you need this and you need this and you need this software and you need to talk with this group and you got to be part of this group. And I'm like, oh, dude, no, now it's a job. I just want to sit here and bullshit with people for an hour, you know, and, and call it a night. You guys are making it like it's some fortune 500 thing. No, get back the fuck up, man. <laughs> so plan is got enough people to give me free money so I can just do this. <laughs> And hire someone to do all the other things. Ah, well, that, well, that, there you go. Well, the thing is, I mean, there's got to be, there's got to be people out there, man. The, the product and between your product and the, like the, the hardware that you use, you know, the the pots and pans and the dishes and all that. There's got to be somebody out there, right? We'll see. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta look at that video and how to ask for free money. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you the. I can send you the direct link. You can listen to it, and then you can take your. You know, take it from there. Whatever you wish to do with it. But I found it. I have not like. I I sent a couple emails out. Uh, I do have one sponsor does all right, but. Oh yeah, I, the CBD guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Fuck, that is good stuff. You ever try on how to uh, cook with marijuana? Actually. <laughs> What's that? I wrote a book on how to cook with marijuana. I think, I think you need to have a section of that. That will get a lot more views than anything you else. I think that, but YouTube already took that one down. <laughs> ah. I get. I don't know what my luck is, but even like when I came out with the book it was before I even did the channel or anything, and. Um, immediately Facebook, like I tried to, you know, I was like, oh, I'll just self-publish. I'll, you know, I'll throw money into the Facebook ads. I'll get my, you know, get reach and everything. First, first time they, they shut me down and they kept citing like illegal stuff. And then as they're, they're citing this, I'm getting ads for like Seth Rogen's house plant. 
and you you like all and I'm like, are you are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, and, like, wow. and then um, yeah, and then they just came out with that that bullshit where they show like the celebrities have a different you know a different ranking than normal folk. I was yeah. banned from Facebook ads for a year and two months before anyone looked at my appeal. So my book went nowhere because I couldn't advertise it. Wow. <laughs> they said, fuck you. Fuck you. But Seth Rogen's doing fine. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, he's. I think his bank account looks all right. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, I mean, you, you, they would probably shut you down with CBD as well, huh? Yeah, because they even tried to like talk about it in that sense, and they shut me down anyway. I think I'm on somebody's list somewhere. Yeah, now it's kind of like uh, getting audited. Once you get audited, now you're you're on a list, and you get watched even worse, right? Or whatever the term that would be. But yeah, the the CBD man, that stuff is oh my god, it's amazing. I love it. Uh, you want a good a good night's sleep? Good stuff, man. Put a little, put a little under your tongue. Sleep like a baby. But yeah, so they, I, I knew that guy uh, long before. <clears throat> he was actually a customer at the video company, and I started the podcast. And we ran into each other one day, and I see yeah, I got this little podcast thing going, and he's like, "Hey, man, let's, let's throw that in the front." I'm like, "All right," and we made a little deal, and it's not much, but anything helps. Just like with uh, merch, too. You know, it's not much, but as long like if if it helps pay the the cost of, you know, the website, the domain, you know, those types of things. As long as it offsets that, I mean, it'll never pay for my time. I mean, the amount of time I put in this thing is crazy, but it's a, I enjoy it. You know, it's a hobby. Yeah. I know I would have never met you. I had a, I was on another person's podcast earlier today, and we just had a great time. And it just, you know, that's why I do it. And that's why the table, the kitchen table, because if I came over to your house or wherever you go, you're going to end up sitting at the kitchen table and bullshitting and having a good time. Yeah, I, that's pretty much where everyone sits when they come over because I'm feeding them something. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, you're a little different because you got the, you got the chef part. But grow, growing up uh, in my house, growing up, I, I mean, stand and room only in the kitchen where every other room is completely empty and everybody's jammed in the kitchen, you know, and that's just, so that's why I named it this. Cause I just want people to sit down and like we've been doing, just hang out and bullshit. And, and that's it. Did you so, grow up in New Jersey? No, I grew up in upstate New York till I was 19 or 20. And then I went to Colorado for 20 years. So, I almost moved there, but then I didn't. <laughs> I love, I loved it there. I, w I wouldn't go back, though. I had a great time. Beautiful. Uh, I'm a huge motorcycle enthusiast, so riding motorcycles out there is uh, amazing. It's beautiful country. The roads are kept extremely well. You know, they're smooth, big sky, mountains, you know, the whole thing. So riding motorcycles out there is great. I wouldn't want to ride a motorcycle around New Jersey. Somebody would fucking run you over. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. These people are crazy. Oh, you because yeah. all those people retire. All those people that drive like that up there retire and they go to Florida. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I drive I drive a 10-ton truck and I'm like still scared somebody's going to plow me over. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, that's uh I appreciate you coming on. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh you brought some things to light to me. Whew. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about that shit for a while. <laughs> well, but, uh, I'm sure there's more stories. So, what's that? Come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, you're always welcome. And uh, let's uh, let's call. I'm gonna cut you out, but uh, hang out just for a few minutes. I got some things for you. All right. All right. Hey, thanks again for coming on. So I want to hear how many times you went no shit, or how many times you went no oh, bullshit. That ain't right, or that ain't true. I want to hear about that. Told you, Grace is a lot of fun. Would love for you to jump on her YouTube channel, subscribe, and submit a question. The holidays are here. We all have cooking questions around the holidays. Jump in the show notes right there. Click on it. Say hello. She would love to hear from you. 
All right, man, I'm going to get you out of here because I know you got shit to do, but don't forget, liverishi.com. Use code word table, 50% off some high quality CBD product. And my website, jump in there, check out the blogs and everything else you want to know about the show. Say hello, would love to hear from you. And don't forget, when I say have a great day, the motherfucker is silent. Till next time. (laughs) 